three, two, one. I actually had the thought of maybe not doing a, a Wednesday video this week. And then I thought, no, there's some things I want to say. And I didn't write any of this down, although I kind of did. Some of this I covered in a, a, a Twitter thread I did a couple of days ago. So if you read that Twitter thread, this might sound a bit familiar at some points. And I apologize for that to those of you who, uh, to whom I will be repeating myself. But I guess maybe some of it bears repeating. Some Nazis showed up at a pride parade in Detroit over the weekend. And it's tempting to, to, to downplay that, to say, well, it was only about 15 or 20 guys and they didn't cause that much of a disruption and it's being blown out of proportion. But most of the people who are saying that are people like me, people who aren't the reason that pride parades exist. You know, I, I am, I do not have an LGBTQ plus identity. I'm a cis hetero white guy. And it's not really for me or for people like me to tell people who were upset about Nazis at the Detroit pride parade that they shouldn't be upset about it. And yet, distressingly, there are a number of people in my own community, with, by which I mean the atheist community, the, the secular community, the skeptical community, who are doing just that. And that really bothers me. It, it pisses me off. And it pisses me off as, as a, a, a cishet guy. I can only imagine how much it pisses people off who are of uh, one or more LGBTQ plus identities, because they're the people who are being patronized. They're the people who are being talked down to. And, and finger wagged at and, you know, being told, ah, you shouldn't worry about that. That's, you know, you're, you're overreacting. People in our community who know how to say the right words, who know how to play the role of an ally, who know how to make it sound like they're on the side of, of marginalized people, but have absolutely no shame at all, no problem whatsoever in tone policing them when they get upset about something that this privileged person doesn't think they should be upset about, as though, as though it's our call, as though we're the ones who are the arbiters of what is worthy of outrage and what isn't. That's not okay. It's one of the most fundamental and I think important lessons that I personally have learned in my, <laughs> my journey to wokeness or whatever the fuck you want to call it my striving to be a less shitty person over the last several years is a lot of these things aren't my call. And if I want to stand in solidarity with people who are different than I am, who are less privileged than I am, then that's what I should do. I should stand in solidarity with them and I, I shouldn't tone police them when they are expressing a concern. And yeah, it was only a few Nazis at Detroit Pride. But I think we should all be able to agree that a few Nazis is a few too many, should we not? And I think we should all be able to agree, I would think we should all be able to agree, that it's fucked up that the few Nazis who turned up to Detroit Pride had a police escort and maybe the right thing to say in response to LGBTQ people that you know expressing their concern and their fear and their anger over something like that would, would, would be to express your support for them and your solidarity with them and not necessarily to say, well, actually, you should be glad the police were there because if the police hadn't been there, what could have been a lot worse? Those Nazis could have really caused a lot more trouble. You shouldn't be shaming the police for being there. You should be thanking them because they kept all those people at the, at the parade safe from the Nazis. 
I just think that's kind of a fucked up thing to say. And I just, I wonder about a person, any person, who fancies themselves as an ally of, of marginalized people, who feels comfortable saying something like that in public, no less, to a trans person, let's say, who is expressing concern about this. I just, I, 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 I question that person. And look, just as I am not the arbiter of what LGBTQ people should be worried about, I am also not the arbiter of who is an ally and who isn't. That's not my place. That's not a label that I should be able to apply to someone. And, and most of all, myself. It's just not something that I have the right to do. But I have to believe that if you do want to be an ally to people, at least one of the qualifications should be that you have the ability to express unqualified support for and solidarity with marginalized people, the, the people that you want to be an ally to. That's got to be on the list, right? That's got to be on the list of qualifications. It doesn't mean you have to do that every single time, and it certainly doesn't mean that you, you can't ever be critical or questioning, but you should at least have the capacity to express unqualified solidarity. And there are so many people in our community, in the atheist community, especially lately, when uh, YouTubers with large audiences in our community have said some questionable things, have said some things that, that a lot of people, including myself, consider to be transphobic and, and very ignorant and harmful to trans people or to LGBTQ plus people in general. And, and they not only express support for the person saying all of these problematic, bigoted things, they seem completely incapable of expressing that kind of unqualified support for people who they claim to be allies of or claim to want to be allies of. If you can't say, I support LGBTQ people, if you can't say, I support trans people, for example, and then put a period on the end of that sentence, if you have to put a comma and then say, however, and then add some horseshit about, oh, I, I think some of the reaction to YouTuber X, rationality rules, who the fuck am I kidding? I'm talking about rationality rules. And the, the fucking, the, the guy who was saying all of the pandering, uh, patronizing, excuse me, things to uh, one of my trans friends was Matt Dillahunty. Why, why am I being cute about it? Why am, why am I being cute about it? I'm talking about Matt Dillahunty tone policing trans people about Nazis at Pride. And when I say transphobic YouTuber, I'm talking about rationality rules and his transphobic YouTube videos. And I use the plural there because he's made a few at this point. And the people who support him and take his side and still try to claim that they're allies to trans people. Again, it's not up to me who's an ally to trans people and who's not. I'm not, I'm not the judge of that, but I would have to think that they're missing a couple of key qualifications if that's what they want other people to think of them as. <laughs> that just seems, that just, that just, I don't know, that seems to be the situation to me. I don't know for a fact. Op opinions vary. There might be some trans people. I, I know there are some trans people who, who think that they are actually good allies. That's their opinion. I personally don't really get it. And a lot of the trans folks that I'm close to and I'm friends with and I listen to and sort of defer to for things like this, they don't really get it either. And I just wonder, why is it so difficult for someone who claims to be a friend of, of LGBTQ people to just express unqualified support in a situation like this and say, you know what, you're right. You're absolutely right. He shouldn't have made those videos. You're absolutely right. Those Nazis should not have been at Pride. I am completely on your side. You are totally justified in your anger and your fear and, and your concern. And I'm on your side and I stand with you. And it's fucked up that the cops were protecting the Nazis. It's fucked up that the cops even let the Nazis be there in the first place. I saw an article today from, I think it was uh, the, the, the police chief, maybe? Uh, someone on the, on the police force who was involved in the, the police protection for the Nazis at Pride, who said, you know, actually, and this is to sort of continue this, well, the cops were protecting people narrative. They weren't protecting the Nazis. They were protecting the people at Pride. To sort of further that narrative, they said, well, actually, we had intelligence that these uh, neo-Nazis who crashed the Pride Parade 
They were hoping to provoke Charlottesville too. They were hoping to, to provoke some kind of violent incident because a few of them were armed. I, I don't know if I mentioned that or not when I was describing it earlier, but a few of the Nazis were armed, which is legal to do in Michigan, which is a completely different fucked up issue that I'm not gonna go too in depth about in this video, but that's that's something we should maybe think about fixing too. Uh, and the, the, the person on the police force, whoever it was said, you know, we, we, got, we had legitimate uh, intelligence that, that these Nazis were, were trying to start some shit at Pride. And that's why, well, that's why we were there. And that's why we were, were trying to keep them separated from, from the rest of the people at, at the parade. And my, my reaction is, well, if you thought that there was a, a, a reasonable assumption that they were going to the Pride Parade with the intention of provoking something violent to happen, well, why did you let them there in the first place? Why, why did you allow them to go in the first place? If the police are going to intercede, why not intercede and say, get the fuck out of here? We, we have reason to believe you're here and up to no good, so just go home, get the fuck out of here. Why, why, why don't they do that? If they had done that, I think there'd be a lot less problem. I think there'd be a lot, a lot fewer people complaining. But they didn't do that. They said, no, <laughs> it's, not like we, it's not like we can tell the Nazis not to go to the Pride Parade and try to provoke a violent incident. We have, we have to at least let them get close enough to try. So, I don't know, if you, can't, if you can't express unqualified support for people in that situation, who you want to be allies of, who you claim to be allies of, who you will, you will, you will show your credentials of, of being an ally to, if challenged, you know, because that, again, that's something that a lot of these folks do. Dillahunty has done this, Rationality Rules has done this quite shamelessly, where he'll say, I'm a supporter of the trans community. Don't you know who I do? They do the don't you know who I am shit. How dare you? How dare you suggest that I could have ever said something transphobic? I'm a supporter of the trans community. I always have been. Don't you know who you're talking to, right? They do that shit. <laughs> and yet, they seem incapable of, of just saying, you know what? I'm on your side. I'm, I'm on your side. And I'm not going to tone police you, and I'm not going to patronize you and I'm not going to talk down to you. I'm just going to be on your side. They, they, they seem incapable of doing that. They, they, they think that, that the, 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 the rational, intelligent thing to do is to take what they believe is, is the nuanced viewpoint, which is, well, I can, I'll say that I'm on your side, but then I also have to, I also have to kind of side with the other side too, just to show, just, just to show that I'm not biased, right? They have to do that, which, uh, I don't know. There's something else semi-related to this that I wanted to touch on too. As long as I'm here, and as long as, I'm, as long as I've walked so far from my truck anyway, might as well, <laughs> might as well continue to unload on you. Um, uh, Susan Wojcicki, who is the, the CEO of YouTube, uh, was at an event recently, and there was a Q&A, and she was asked, if she had any regrets about YouTube's decision to allow Steven Crowder to stay on the platform and, and to allow his videos bullying and harassing Carlos Mazza to remain on the platform. And she said, oh, you know, I'm very personally sorry about this whole situation because YouTube tries to be an inclusive platform and we try to be supportive and we want to have a, a community on YouTube that is welcoming to LGBTQ people. And I'm personally very sorry that we had to allow Steven Crowder and, and his content to remain on YouTube, but it was the right call because our policies have to be enforced consistently. And she said, this is and the most amazing thing. She said, and you know, if we got rid of those videos, if we got rid of those videos of Crowder's that were bullying Carlos Maza, the problem is We'd have to get rid of all these other videos too. To which I might retort, isn't that the problem? Isn't the problem with your platform that there's so much hateful content? There's so many homophobes and transphobes and, and misogynists and professional bullies of all stripes on your platform making tons of money 
selling merchandise, growing their audiences, recruiting people to their organizations, spreading their hateful, ignorant messages. There are so many people doing that on YouTube right now that yes, if you enforced your harassment policies energetically and consistently, you would have to remove quite a bit of content. Whose fault is that? <laughs> and how is that Carlos Maza's fault? And how is it that he should be the one to have to pay for it, to have to suffer for it? I just don't, I don't understand how, I, I, don't, I don't accept that as an apology, for one thing, because it's not an apology. And I don't see how that is supposed to get people to sympathize with her position as the CEO of YouTube. If you say, oh, well, it's just, it's such a shame because, you know, we would love to have a supportive and open platform, but we just have to let these homophobic and transphobic and, and white supremacist videos stay. We just, we don't have a choice. You know, we have to as though this is something being imposed on the company from outside. And you just can't have it both ways. You hey, proof that I'm at the battlefield, by the way. There you go. What do you think of that? Nice piece of hardware. Um, you can't have it both ways. You can't say, oh, we're going to be an open platform and we're going to be welcoming to LGBTQ people. We're going to hang rainbow banners on everything in sight for Pride Month. But when we have the chance to ban someone who has been using our platform to profit from and spread homophobic abuse for years, we're going to let them stay. You, you, that is not consistently applying your principles. If, if you're going to, to appeal to consistency of principles for something like that, you had damn sure better have been applying your principles consistently up until then. And that's just not a, a consistent application of principles. You don't get to willfully choose to host abusive, bigoted content on your platform and then say, oh, but we don't endorse that because you, you absolutely do. That's not, that, <laughs> that's not something that you can split. You, it's your website. You control who gets to host stuff on your website. And if you say, oh, sure, the, the homophobic and, and transphobic stuff can stay, the white supremacist stuff can stay, the Nazis can stay, oh, but we don't endorse them. No, that doesn't work. You, you just did endorse them. You just endorsed them. So it's frustrating. It, it, it's frustrating because it's so easy. It's so easy to say we support LGBTQ people when it's trendy, when it's popular to do so, when it's June. It's so easy to say that and, and, and to collect your, your brownie points, to collect your cookies and say, see, we're, we're woke, we're, we're progressive, we're open-minded people. Look at us. You know, look, look how supportive we are of LGBTQ people. It's, it's so easy to say that. But if you say that while you're still allowing people who want to harm and kill those people to make money on your platform and, 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 and to make you money, which is another part of this, to make you money on your platform then those words are hollow. And I think most people can tell that. I think most people can, can see that, that it's just, it's just words. It's just, it's a, it's a hollow slogan that has nothing behind it. It's something you're saying to make you look good. But when push comes to shove, when you have the chance to prove it, when you have the chance to stand behind those words with actions, then all of a sudden you, you're full of excuses for why you can't say that. You know, with YouTube, it's that they just want the money. They just want the money. They know, and it's their own fault, but at this point, they've been doing it for years, and they, they have a, a significant chunk of their user base that are part of, of these white supremacist, transphobic, homophobic people. And they just don't, they just want the money. They don't want to turn off that large of a, a chunk of their audience, an audience that they have cultivated, an audience that didn't just show up by accident, but an audience that they have tacitly approved of and welcomed all this time. And with the people I was talking about earlier in the first half of the rant, to try and bring this all together, it's, it's a very similar issue. 
it's, oh, I don't want to turn off my audience. Why do you think the atheist community of Austin and people like Matt Dillahunty are trying to have it both ways with rationality rules and, and with transphobia, trying to, to pay lip service to trans people so they don't appear to be bigoted, they don't appear to be small-minded and intolerant, but also not really doing anything about it because they don't want to lose the transphobic people and their support in their organization or their views on their videos or whatever else they're getting that is benefiting them. It's all about not wanting to lose the support of shitty people in order to show unequivocal support for marginalized people. And I just, I don't know. I don't have, I don't have a gene in my body that allows me to respect that or allows me to be sympathetic with that. And I would much rather alienate transphobic people and homophobic people and racist people from my content and my channel than have them be on board and take their money and take their support. I try to willfully piss those people off. If any of them are still hanging around, I try to do whatever I can to tell them to get lost because I don't want their support. I don't want, their, I don't want them to be on my side. I don't want to find common ground with them. I don't want to reach out to them. I don't want to debate them. I don't want to have anything to do with them. And that's not like a choice that I'm making to be brave or, or to virtue signal or whatever the fuck people say. That's just, I just automatically feel like I do that. That's just, that's a reflexive thing for me. And for a lot of other people as well, not just for me, a lot of people of all different types of identities. You see something like that and you just reflexively push it away and you say, fuck that. I'm not going to talk to that person. I'm not going to normalize that person. I'm not going to legitimize that person. I'm not going to treat that person as though they have something of value to say because they don't. And what they do say is incredibly harmful to people. You know, if I'd been thinking, because I, I, I went off on this whole thing in the middle there about allyship and how you don't get to, to choose. If you're, if you're like a cishet person like me, if you're a privileged person like me, you don't get to choose who's an ally to marginalize people and who isn't. And if I had been thinking, hey, no, I, I would have, I, ha I got this shirt. I got a, a Star Trek shirt with the, the, the Starfleet Delta on it, but it's, it's rainbow colors for like for Pride Month. I, I got that a couple weeks ago and I think I'm going to wear it for my, um, for my next Trek Ashley video. Just, you know, for Pride Month, just as a little something. If I had been smart, if I had been thinking, I would have worn that today. So I could have used it as a prop. And I could have said, you know, just because I wear this shirt doesn't make me an ally. I, you're not an ally because you wear the rainbow. You're not an ally because you, you know when to say the right thing to make you look good. You're an ally if you, if you, you live that way consistently. And if, and if the people who you are trying to be an ally of uh, think that that's what you are. And, and judge you to be their friend and to be someone they can trust. Like that's what makes you an ally. You don't, you, don't get to, you don't get to put that shirt on. It's not a shirt you can just put on and say, look at me, I'm an ally. Like that's something that other people have to judge you as being that. If I'd been smart, I would have worn that shirt for this video. But I'm not smart, clearly, as, as I think I've demonstrated very, very emphatically over the past few minutes, I'm not that smart. I'm told that one of the privileges is that there's a much lower bar for uh, mediocre white folks to clear in order to be acceptable. So hopefully, even if I have not lived up to my usual standard, which is not terribly high, hopefully I've at least cleared that bar with this video. But as with so many other things, it is not for me to decide, dear viewer, but you.